Hi everyone, I'm Steve Knutson. I'm a Microsoft MVP for Office Services and Apps. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can use JavaScript to connect a SharePoint page and read some parameters from the URL, and then pass those through to a Power Automate flow. Um, so there's lots of scenarios where you might need to use something like this. Um, one uh, thing to mention up front is that it does require a premium connector uh, or a premium license to be able to use the HTTP request. Um, so if you if you don't have that, uh, then you're going to need one for this scenario. You can get a 90-day free trial if you want to have a bit of a play. So how do we actually do this? The first thing I'm going to do here is just explain how the page works. So on here, I've got a, a page with a modern script editor web part. And in there, I've got some JavaScript, which generates this button. I'll show the JavaScript shortly. And when this button is clicked, I'm going to read the URL parameter up the top here. So parcel ID 123. And then I'm going to send that as an HTTP request to um, an, to the API endpoint for uh, Power Automate for my flow that I'm creating. So let's see how this is all linked together. So the starting point is the flow. So with a flow here, I'm going to create a new flow and I'm going to use uh, when an HTTP request is received. And this is an instant flow that I've used for this. So when I specify this, what it does a couple of things. It asks me for um, a JSON body. So this is the package that it's going to receive from the sending JavaScript. So what I've used um, is I've just used this format here. So I've called my parameter search query and then I've got a string value that comes. It doesn't matter in your example um, what text you have in here. What's important is the format. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to jump back over into our um, JavaScript, into our, sorry, into our Power Automate here. And I'll show you how this is done. So I'm just going to delete this part out. And I'm going to use this option here to use a sample payload to generate the schema. So that code that I just pasted is the um, sample payload of what I'm, I'm going to be sending from my JavaScript. And so what the Power Automate flow should be expecting to receive. So if I go done, you'll see it automatically generates the schema for me up here. And you'll see the format slightly different than what I pasted in. Now, the next step in the process is that we use a JSON we want to parse the JSON to pull out the variables. Now, you can create a more sophisticated schema than this. This is a trivial one for this example, but you could have multiple fields, for example. So in my JSON schema down here, this schema here must match what's up in this top one, obviously, because it's the same data. And what I'm doing is taking the body output from this first step, the trigger step, passing it into the parse JSON. And when I do that, what it does is it allows me to then pick out uh, the... Um, the values that are from here. So I can get the body and the JSON search string. So I've just added that in here. So what we can, so when we're debugging, we can see the value pass through. So that's the first part. Now, what you'll notice is that when in this very first action up here, it gives me a, a, a URL. So I can copy this URL. And what I can do with that is I can use a tool called Postman to generate some JavaScript for me and also to help me with testing. So with Postman, I can fire the Postman screen up. And what I've done is I've pasted the URL in, and I've used, in Postman, I've used the post um, method. And you'll see that my search term down here is in my in the body. I've selected raw, and I've pasted in my example um, schema as well. So what this is going to do is actually going to send through, when I run this, it's actually going to trigger the flow. So let's just, to prove I'm not cheating, go back to our flow. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go back to the run history of the flow. And you'll see that it last ran 18 hours ago. So what I'm going to do to test my flow, so before I've done anything else, using Postman, I'm just going to go send. And you'll see it's got my search terms in here. So that's sending to the, to the endpoint. Now if I click back into Power Automate and refresh my screen, we should hopefully have a flow that's run the last few seconds. All things being equal, of course. So um, Postman does require a registration to download, but you can um, it's a free registration. There's no cost to actually using it um, if you're uh, just tinkering like, like I am here. So there we go. 24 seconds ago, it ran the flow. And what you'll see is that if I look at the run history, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that um, it ran successfully, which is a good thing. The second thing that you'll notice is if you go straight to the end down here and look at our compose step, the output of our compose is my search terms. So let's pull the parameter in from here. 
received the JSON object, generated a, uh, the output from that has been been taken. You'll see the output that's created the contents here, so I can see what it actually received. And then I can see the output of that down here. And then I've pulled the actual value out individually down here as a string. And then I can pass that string into other uh, Power Automate functions so I can start generating a, my, my workflow to do whatever it is I want to do with that parameter. So that's really cool. So the first step in testing is quite easy. You can use the using Postman. The next step is to generate some JavaScript code. Now, if you're like me and you're not a great JavaScript developer, what you can do is you can click on this little code button on the right hand side of the screen in Postman. It's going to let me do it. And what should happen is it should then give me the option to build a code snippet. I can push the weed down arrow here and choose what type of code to write. I've chosen JavaScript fetch. You'll see it gives you all sorts of different types of code. And then I've just basically copied this code and I've used this in a JavaScript function. So if I go back to my code view, um, I've basically taken that code that it generated. I've added an on-click button at the top here that, that creates the button on the page. And then I've just pasted in the JavaScript that was generated by Postman. And I've made a couple of minor changes. I, I wanted to change this string here, line 42, to um, include the query value, because by default it just puts in a static string. So I'm using the actual query value from, um, so I'm calculating that out and inserting it into the JSON string. So if we go back up to this piece up here, what it's doing is it's replacing this these Xs with the query value in code. So once I've got the code, then what I need to do is I need to go into SharePoint and in my SharePoint page, I'm going to use the modern script editor web part. I've actually got two in this page, but it's the second one with my example one. So I'll click onto this one here, edit the markup, and I'm just pasting the code that I showed you before from my editor. I'm just using Microsoft Code. You could use Visual Studio Code. Um, code Editor is a very simple text editor type code editor, but a, a Visual Studio Code is also available for free. I've pasted my JavaScript in here, and what you'll see is at the very top of my JavaScript, I've just had to put the script um, and the close the script at the, at the bottom. That doesn't come with the code snippet. You need to type that in manually. Save the code, close the page. Then when I run the page, I get a page that looks like this. I'm going to click this button. So I've just clicked the button, and now if I go back to my Power Automate, sorry, back into my Power Automate screen, into my run history, if I've wired up everything correctly, then that will have run a few seconds ago. So eight seconds ago it ran. And just to prove that that was actually the correct run, let's have a look at what the value is at the bottom of the flow. So this ran successfully again, and you'll see at the end of the flow here, when I open this Compose, it's got parcel ID 123, which if you recall, is the parameter from the SharePoint string uh, uh, query string on the SharePoint site URL. Great if you're building like dynamic um, links, dynamic pages, for example, which pass some parameters in SharePoint, and then you want to run a, a, a workflow based on the value. So that's the that's the process. Um, as you can see, it's actually not as um, as it's not as complicated as you might expect it would be. Um, and the Postman tool is very handy. How can you use this? Well, there's a few different ways you can use it. You can use it for doing things like generating a dynamic query. Uh, where you query um, some something, pull data and display it into a SharePoint page, um, or in, or use that within a flow. Um, you can use it to parameterize other um, uh, other actions. So it could be based on the page URL or the parameter on that page URL. So it's a product page and it's got a unique product ID in the title in the um, linked and sorry in the query string. Then you could use that to generate a flow and do different actions based on. Um, what, what, whichever page it was based on the page's ID. You don't necessarily need to use the um, URL parameters. You could also use JavaScript to bring through other attributes of the page. You could use the um, PMPJ um, um, module to um, read metadata, for example, of an item and trigger. For those types of items, um, you could, there are other ways to trigger it. You don't necessarily need to do an HTTP request, uh, but you can see it's quite useful for a variety of things. So hopefully this has been useful and you've learned something. Um, I've got lots of other videos on Power Automate. Um, please uh, like them and subscribe if you've um, if you've um, enjoyed what you've seen, and I'd love to hear a comment. Thank you very much.